by a resounding clap of everybody. Please, I want you to clap excitedly and exuberantly. I want you to be a prophet unto four persons of your choice. So to each one, I have seen God's program tonight. Your name is on it. hand and prophesy over yourself and say my name is on God's program this night I, I want to thank those uh, of you uh, they have flow we were driving in now this evening and I saw a mammoth crowd out there I didn't know that we have this large number of people can we give them a clap of free those of them I don't overflow. Since we started, the enemy has never fought any program as this night's nice program. I was forced to leave Uyo by 5.30 a.m. to speak in Port Harcourt. I was forced to rush back to a wedding anniversary of one of my very, very dear friends. And the governor wanted me to be part of the program at the stadium this night. We rushed in there to say, Your Excellency, we can't make it. And I hear they had been waiting for me, announcing my name, but I, I just told His Excellency we have to return to his people. Tomorrow, he'll be here to close the service. This is going to be a great, of awesome night. There are six people who have been coming here with their ears blocked. When I start administration this night, those ears shall open. I did not say if you believe, even if you don't believe. I, I have heard that voice more than 30 times, and this night, those six persons shall not go back with closed, blocked ears. We have 54 persons who are struggling with their sight. I don't know if you know what blindness can do to a man. Of all diseases, it is the worst disease. I've gone through it once, I understand. There was a time I couldn't read the clock on the wall. There was a time I could drive past my own house. There was a time I saw a doctor in London. He said, hey, Reverend, you are legally blind. And I asked him to shut up his mouth. That every problem has time limit. A day will come that this my blindness shall disappear. In those days, I would read the Bible and bend this way. And I hear people say to me, do you know you have gone blind? The day I was near tears was a day my relation greeted me, and I didn't recognize his face anymore. And he asked me, hey, Reverend, have you gone blind or are you just stupid? Well, because of his age, I felt he was rude to me. The other side of this story was God will use me to heal others and I'll go home blind. I'll stand on the platform. I'll not see those in the crowd. You can't see your wife's face. 
you can't see the face of your enemies. But one day I was shocked. This great God visited me. Do you know I cried? I called my wife and said to her, Madam, do you know when I get home, I shall recognize your face one more time. Of all things under the sun, sickness is the worst. You know, sickness makes a strong man become weak. Sickness takes away your appetite from you. They will place food on your table. You will not have the desire to eat. Sickness can stop you from sleeping. I don't know how many people are sick tonight, but I have this witness in my heart that 54 of you shall be visited this night. God will cleanse your eyes and will make you see clearer and better and more vividly and more distinctly. We were in about, I don't know how many weeks ago, uh, Pastor Joe, I think about seven weeks ago, we were in Abba, and here was a, a crippled man who also had cancer of the liver. I stood there and I wept. I asked God, how can one man be a cripple? The same man will have cancer of the liver. There are many people who see the sick and cannot cry. I'm not in that category. When I see the sick, most of the time, I'll find myself weeping. What makes you weep is what God wants you to solve. I was crying, and God said, oh my, stop crying. The funny thing was, earlier in that program, the governor of the state was there. But that evening, I couldn't control myself. I wept, and God said, stop, stop, stop crying. Raise a song. I'll take over. I don't, we're going to do different things this night. Any one of them I will raise up is because God wants to use it to meet you at the point of your need. Don't grumble. This is your night of divine visitation. A day comes in every man's life that God will say to him, I have remembered you. I raised a song in that service in Abba. Before I read the song, I told the crowd as I sing, this man shall fall under the anointing. Let nobody wake him up. When he stands up, he's going to walk. I went from song to song, and he fell under the anointing and slept off. Men and brethren, when he woke up, he did not walk. He began to dance. His sister who brought him began to weep and roll on the floor and shout, the cripple is walking, the cripple is walking. I don't know where the enemy has wounded you. That wound shall tonight be healed. whether you have ever seen a married woman that has no child for many years. One of the cases we had this year was this sister, a very popular sister, married for 25 years without a child. And she was already 52. When her husband came, he came with the names of members of their church that were also buried. When a pastor discusses his uh, difficulty and weeps, it means that the case is a serious one. When a woman is 52 and has no child, it, it, uh, can't you see she has lost every hope of being like other women? But that day, God compelled me to say to this wonderful pastor, not only shall your wife be pregnant, she shall have twins. And he reminded me of her age and said, Sir, she's 52. This God that preach is awesomely awesome. 
when it comes to performing miracles, it can suspend natural laws of life and make the impossible possible. I have seen your name on his program tonight. I don't know if you know that poverty is a very deadly disease. You know, when you come from a family where parents are hopelessly and wretchedly and stupidly and gracelessly poor, your classmates will be on their way to school. You'll be on your way to hawk granite and sell newspapers. And the painful thing is those from rich families will look down on you. They'll look down on you. Even when you look more intelligent than they are, they'll look down on you. And you can't even marry a pretty girl from any of the rich families. No, they won't let you come close. When you walk through their gates and say to their daughter, I tell your father, I have come to propose to you. The father will see you from the window and send for that girl to warn her not to allow you through that gate again. Now, I don't know if you know what poverty can do to a son in a family. Others will travel to U.S. to study. You'll be going to farm to weed. But my brethren, I have an anointing that can catapult a man from the pit of poverty to a place of glory. And so we we have we have we have twenty women here who have been asking God for the fruit of the womb. As I begin to preach and speak and sing, there will be a volcanic eruption in the wombs. And once you feel that encounter, it simply means that tonight is the beginning of your unending laughter. We have an adopted daughter, my wife and I, a woman who had no child for and she came crying. When I asked her to calm down and tell me her problem, she ignored me. And I said, hey, your punishment for ignoring me will be this. Every year, one child. And she said, if I ever get pregnant, I'll offer myself for adoption. I'll be your daughter. I'll sweep. I'll cook. I'll buy you gifts. Do you know that daughter of ours? Last time my wife and I were discussing whether she was not more useful to us than our biological daughters. When God wipes away your tears and blesses you with children, do you know <laughs> your story will change? Tonight there shall be a great move of God. The next group are those who have come with, with pain in their legs. And you are 75 in number. And 50 of you came back from your villages. And the pain started. And to you, the pain is a mystery, a puzzle, a mind bender. But this night, don't worry whether you were poisoned or not. As I declare this great healing word of God. Your bones shall hold a meeting with your nerves and your muscles. There are four of these 75 people who do not work very well. When the power of God will begin to move tonight, your leg will move also. Your bones will move, your, your nerves will move, the muscle will move. There will be a reconciliation between the three of them. And that pain will disappear. And then we have 30 people who have crawling movement. Something crawls on the inside. It, it is not continuous. It comes occasionally and intermittently. But every time it does, they will become sick. And therefore, that stone the enemy has placed upon you, by my spoken word tonight, shall be returned to the sender. I don't know what other things God will ask me to do tonight. 
But I want to announce this is your night of divine visitation. I don't know whether you understand what I mean by that. When God intends and wants to visit a man, suddenly his presence will become real to you. You begin to feel and see him. And this is that night. Can you, before you take your seat, find just two persons. Say to each one, this night is my night of divine visitation. Take your seat and let's give the Lord the resounding clap of from somebody. If you have your Bible, let's go to the book of Genesis chapter 49. We'll take verse 3. I want to show you a mystery and a puzzle. I don't know where you come from, but in your village, there are people who do not live long. They always die prematurely. Every five years, every seven years, they will bury somebody. I don't know where you come from. There are families where nobody from their rank has ever had an uncommon success. Everybody in that family is struggling. Life is a puzzle. There are people who come from families where you will never find peace amongst them. They are always fighting one another. And sometimes you see the son threatening to beat up his mother of all people. I watched a young man slap his mother and I wept. There are other families where one particular sickness will take them to their graves one after another. I don't know who is running after your family. This night shall be a night of healing and deliverance. There are, there are 300 people that shall be healed without prayer, but there are 34 people. I'm going to declare war against what is harassing them. And when I do, their legs will not carry them again. And while they will sleep like pregnant night nurses, the, the spirit behind that crisis will crawl out of them. How many of you want me to go that far? Anybody here? Are you sure? I could have stayed back because I've exhausted myself, but I'm in love with you. I want God to wipe away your tears. The, the other side of life is you can carry a very big burden and others around you will not know what you are going through. You may carry a form of disease. Nobody will know what to do. You may carry a form of problem and those around you will not know. The painful thing, why you are in tears, somebody will ask you for financial help. Not knowing that you are in, in deep trouble. But this night, he who sees what no man can see, he who sees what no man can see, shall visit you, shall visit you, shall visit you, shall visit you. Shall visit you. Can you raise your hand and shout hallelujah somebody? I'm going to play with you. Please don't sleep. Satan is so wicked that we're about, when we're about to break the chain that holds you, Satan will say to you, you're not one of them. Sleep, sleep, sleep. And many people will respond by saying, yeah, 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 yes, yeah, sir. This is a night of warfare. That load you carried to this place shall not go back with you. 
And there are many looking at me this night who come from families where nobody had ever prospered. Tonight, I declare you will be the first person I was driving out of my village not too long ago. A young man drove past me and blocked my way. I was angry. My friend, what's, what's your problem? He said, sir, you were in a village. You spoke about families where nobody had ever prospered, where nobody had ever bought a high solid car, where nobody had ever built a study building. He said, that's your prayer was answered by God for me. This is the first car ever to be bought in my family, the man said. He said, last week I sent two of my children to study in UK. I am the first to do it. He said, I am now building a story building in my village. This is why I brought you away. It's like the young man uh, what do you call this as means of God church in Abba, where a madman was part of the service? Ohabiam. Ohanku. <laughs> I saw <laughs> in the service, I saw a young man chained. Two legs and two hands. And I said, hey, hey, remove the chains. He had been set free. So they removed the chains. When we called for offering, he got up and brought his own offering. But two years after, we were fueling our vehicles at Abba over the road. He rushed to greet me. My security man won't let him greet me. He said, tell him that mad man, he had to remove the chains they used in binding him. He's the one that wants to greet him. I am now in school. I am back to the university and I'm doing well. Tell him I am the man. This man, God is going to do all manner of miracles. I don't know what he will do. Can we then say to God, you are the might. Wait, when we sing this song, stop looking at others. Lift up your eyes and focus your attention on this awesomely awesome God. Let his presence come upon you and mock anything, any man, any problem, any sickness that mocks you. Let that chain be broken. It's not the time to look around you. So lift it up and focus on him whose power has no measure of comparison. Whose power you have to go beyond the boundaries of human language to describe his power. Let's say to him, we remember we are singing to him, not to anybody. Let's say to him, you are the mighty God, the great I am. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are the mighty God, the great I am. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. I pray your person ever and in me. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. I pray your person ever and in me.
This is why we are going to use spoken word to cancel the cause of oppression in your life. But what is a cause? A cause is you standing at the middle road of life and not know what to do with your life. You give others counsel, they will do very well. But you, you can't rise above where you are. What is a cause? A cause is you listening to a message of this kind tonight and not remember what was said. I not even know what was said. I was speaking in Canada two years ago. A, a woman called me later and said, Daddy, that service was awesome. And I asked her, what did I say? She said, whatever you said, I have forgotten, but I enjoyed the service. That's what we call a cross. What is a cross? A cross is you standing where all those you have helped will turn around to harm you, to fight you. People you have assisted will see nothing good in you again. What is the cause? The cause is your own children treating you like a stranger. Things that bother you will not touch their hearts. What is the cause? The cause is you having relations who are doing well but who will never think of helping you. What is the cause? The cause is that sickness that mocks you. You go to hospital, after hospital, and the sickness will not go. You begin to worship on the altar of that sickness. The, the other side of this type of cross is the sad fact that your doctor may never know what the sickness is. The day he will discover will be a day to your death. What is the cross? The cross is you coming to a Standing in a place where nothing you lay your hand to do prospers. That is to say, poverty will live in your house and poverty will follow you everywhere you go. What is a cause? A cause is your sky becoming brass and the ground where you farm becoming iron. What is a cause? A cause is you not knowing why you are here on earth. I 
will soon turn to the book of Acts chapter 8 verse 1 and I will show that Paul plays the course. Jesus died for the cause of the law. But the father can put a cause upon you. Your pastor can put a cause upon you. A prophet can put a cause upon you. And there are things when you pay your tithe and pay your offering and you don't take care of your parents, you have put a cause upon yourself. So let's start from chapter 49, verse 3. Reuben, Reuben, thou art my first son. Thou art my first son. My might. My might. And the beginning of my strength. Pastor Joe, let me have it. Yes, go on. The excellency of dignity and the excellency of power. Yes. Unstable as water. But unstable as water. Thou shalt not excel. Thou shalt not excel. Because thou wentest up to thy father's bed. Then defilest thou it. The, this is the first son of the family that ought to have taken over from his father. But the father in anger demolished that beautiful uh, future. The father destroyed that great eminence and prominence. The, the father said to him, you will excel no more. That is to say, no matter what you do in this life, you will not succeed. A father has a backing authority. Can you see the book of Proverbs 20, verse 20? A father has backing authority. I have preached this over and again. Don't fight with your father. Don't fight your father. Don't argue with your father. Because your father may look fragile, but he has the power to limit your, your future. He has the power to destroy it completely and totally. Yes, sir. Whoso curses his father or his mother, will cause his father or his mother, his lamb shall be put out in all his lights. That which gives him direction, that motivates him, that catapults him, that nudges him on to succeed, shall be taken away from him. Jacob said to Reuben, Reuben, you ought to have inherited everything I have. But no, you are going to be a slave among your brothers. It is frightening. And if your father was caused by your grandfather, you're going to live a life of hardship and a life of struggling and a life of humiliation. Can we turn to the book of Second Kings chapter 5? Let's take the 25, 26, 27. You can tell us what you are going through in your own life. Only your hearts can bear witness as to what you are going through. But the question is, are you ready tonight to cry out to God and ask him to destroy every form of curse? Now, curses come in different ways. There's a way you jilt a man or a girl a man who had paid your school fees, you jailed him because he's not as educated as you are now. That man has power to put a curse upon you. When you jailed a wife, one of my friends suddenly said to his wife, at the time I married you, I was a poor man, but now I am just too rich for a wife of your class. Therefore, this marriage is annulled. And the woman said to him, as I go, so shall your peace go. You will not know peace anymore. You will not enjoy marriage with any other woman. I have saved you for a good 40 years. Do you know that, my friend? 
went through hell on earth and died a lonely man with no one to cook for him with no one to ask after his welfare read on sir and he said unto me when the man talked that ought to meet thee and to receive garments and olive he has a sheep oxen men servants men servants the leprosy therefore of Naaman shall cleave unto thee and unto thy seed forever and he went out from his presence a leper as white as snow repeat it because your phone was not working well at the beginning it is amazing that Gehazi could think of offending Elisha of all people it's like people who come to a place like this to steal they make me laugh people who steal in a fellowship like this they make me laugh it is suicide you remember the last man who stole from us I told him I will not go after you but God will go after you the day he was caught the day I called him and said, do you know you took this much and that much? He said, yes, I did. The next day he changed his, his, his position. He said, I stole what I stole because I needed money. I am not really a thief. He began to give me excuses. And as I speak, it could have been better that government jailed him than God jailing him. When you steal money from a place like this, the sickness people came with and left on the altar shall not follow you home. There are places you must not steal. A young man duped me in 1974. We gave him money to to print a magazine for us. And uh, he went away with the money. I, I was amused. I didn't ask him again uh, to return the money. Seven years after he came, he said, since I took that money from you, I have begun to sell every item I have. As I speak, I don't have money anymore. I've sold my shoes. I've sold my dresses. Can you ask God to forgive me? Men and brethren, Gehazi had no reason to put to insult Elisha. Read on, sir. Take it again and let's hear. Yes, sir. And he said unto him, Yes. Went not my heart with thee? When the man turned again from his chariot to meet thee, is it a time to receive money and to receive garment and only and vineyards and sheep and oxen and men servants and men servants? The leprosy therefore of Naaman shall cleave unto the, thee. The leprosy of Naaman. Remember, Naaman was a leper. Elisha healed him. He brought gifts unto unto Elisha, and Elisha said, "Hey, I'm not interested in your money." There are pastors who are not interested in your money. You cannot bamboozle them with your money. What offer? He went and took that money from Neymar. I'm sure he said to Neymar, my, my master is a stupid man. I am much more intelligent than him. Bring that money. Not to steal. You can't go too far. In fact, not only in the church. Here in New York, a man borrowed money from Union Bank. And if he to pay back this money, the bank sacked the man who gave him the loan. I sent for him, asked him, why will you borrow money from the bank and not pay back? He shocked me when he said, hey, Reverend, every money in the bank is public money. I only took my own portion. 
the way he put it, I, I, I couldn't handle it. And I said to him, you have just bought cancer of the blood. Nobody will, no prayer will heal you until you bring back that money. He brought back, soon after he tested, uh, he, he, they found cancer in his blood. He returned the money to the last couple. He came on a Tuesday, I was counseling people and told me, he said, I have returned the money, but now I have cancer of the blood. And I said, hey, don't worry me, just leave me alone. Go home. He came all the way from Amobia in Anambra. And I said, go back. In five days' time, you're going to sleep like a pregnant nurse. And you sleep for six good days. On the seventh day, the sickness will go. He got angry and said, can't you pray for me? Hey, hey will you shut up your mouth? Don't command me. I'm not your boy. He ran to my wife. My wife surprised me when she came pleading that I, I pray for that young man. Madam, you are not my boss. My boss lives up there. This man must go home and wait as I instructed him. The wife began to cry. My wife began to cry. I lost my own constituency. But I was adamant. The man that gave me the had been sacked. And remember, the man had a family. When such a man is sacked, the wife, the children will suffer. But the man had the audacity to say to me, this is public money. I only took my share. Uh, we, sometimes we can be wicked. I was amused two weeks after he returned, he returned here, dressed in guinea, over starched guinea brocade and a pair of brand new shoes. He asked me, do you remember me? I said, look at this man, I remember you. You had cancer of the blood. He said he went back to the hospital, they tested him, and did not see any form of cancer anymore. <laughs> but he said to me, I, I have run out of money. In my attempt to get cure, I spent all that I had. So I held his hand and said, Father, bless him with financial blessings. Amen. He left Uyo for Calabar Airport, ran into his classmates, who was serving as a federal minister. And that one gave him a contract of seven million naira. He returned and said, Sir, that's your simple prayer. Give me seven million. If you can pray powerfully, God will give me more than seven million. <coughs> right where you are tonight, I don't know what type of cause is functioning in your life and family. You know there are families where nothing the young, the children do can ever please their parents. Give them a loaf of bread. They ask, is that all you brought? Buy them a car. This, this car looks like a, a highly inflammable car. There are families where they don't appreciate one another. I don't know where you come from. There are other families where nobody lives long. But this night I have already said Jesus had banished premature death. And so tonight, while I'll be speaking, when I'll be praying, a presence will leave you to show that your the great the door for you has been closed. It has been closed. <coughs> it has been closed. I don't know whether you know that Noah placed a cross not upon his own child upon his grandchild. It's easy to disgrace your parents, but what Noah did, your parents can do. And so tonight, I want you to probe your life and find out, are you struggling in your life? How many of you know 
Struggling is evidence of the absence of, of the presence of God upon you. There are people who struggle to, to earn money, struggle to pay their rent, struggle to pay their school fees. They struggle in every area of their lives. Once you start struggling, it shows that the presence of God is not upon you because the presence of God greases your life. Makes your life easy. Makes your life comfortable and pleasurable. And so the book of Genesis 39 verse 2 says, And the Lord was with who? Joseph. And he was what? A prosperous man. When God is with you, everything you lay your hand to do shall prosper. Shall prosper. Shall prosper. Shall prosper. But when God is not with you, you are going to struggle through life. This night, I don't know what the enemy has done to make your life uncomfortable and unbearable. But he who made heaven and earth is present in our service tonight. <sighs> to turn your struggling into a, an uncommon successful life. I don't know whether you know you can get to a place in your life where the things you have been looking for shall not come looking for you. Can we run to chapter 5 of the book of Luke? We we'll take verse 4, we we'll take verse 5. I, I, I'm in love with the way Peter put it. Peter said, I have toiled all night. That's a powerful statement. He said, I have toiled all night. I have toiled all night. I don't know who is toiling amongst us this in this place. Do you know even in your marriage, your marriage can be a toiling marriage. Where you cook for your husband, he will find sand in that soup. You sleep to him, you're snoring like a lioness. You you dress he will say you don't have sense of color. You laugh. You hear him say you laugh like a mad woman. You know there are people who are involved in marriages where nobody appreciates them. Even to the man, you can be a husband and your wife may never appreciate you. This night, that situation can change. I mean, if you want to say me, say it well. It can change. It can change. It can change. It can change. Can we hear the book of Luke chapter 5? Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a drought. And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will, Nevertheless, let, at thy word, I will let down the net. He said, I have toiled all night. There are people who are toiling through life. But Jesus came to add grease to your life, to add oil to your life. What happened again, sir? And when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their nets break. And they beckoned unto the their... The same barren water became fruit. Raise your hand and say, This my barren water shall tonight become fruitful water. <laughs> Can you say it one more time? That's what I call the invisible tribes of life. How can a professional, proficient fisherman like Peter not catch a fish for an entire night? I think Peter was a lucky man. He was not a Nigerian. No Nigerian fisherman would ever go to fish, come home with no fish, and have the wife receive him. 
the wife will likely say, I know you were in a woman's house throughout the night. Now you're telling me you were fishing and couldn't catch one fish. Who is fooling who? Stupid man. But tonight, the story of your life has changed. The story of your life has changed. I want you to hear me. All the promises God made to us must be fought for. Number two, there is instruction attached to every promise God has made to you. Find that instruction. And I know that all that God is saying to you, if you believe, if you can believe, all things are what? Possible. Why? Because all things are waiting to be possible in your life. Do me a favor. Stand up and say to two persons, all things are waiting to be possible in your life. Can you prophesy over yourself and say, all things are waiting to be possible in my life? Because this God that preached is ready to grant you what I call all round success and sweatless success. Which one do you prefer? How many of you want the two of them or the one of them? Which one? You can come to a place where you enjoy what I call all round success. God can give you good marriage, give you good health, give you wisdom give you creativity, give you favor, particularly ever-increasing favor, favor in the sight of men that matter, favor in the sight of the angels of God. And this night I'm going to declare, in 2016, you will not borrow money. No, it's, it's a gift God has given to us. Since I met Christ in 1958, till date, I have never borrowed money from any bank, from anybody. As I speak, banks come to me to beg me to borrow money from them. My bank in London, Barclays Bank, they consider me a bad customer because I don't borrow money. No, I don't need to borrow money for the Bible, it's neither a borrower or a lender be. To borrow money to tell God you're a poor financial manager. And I want to announce that this God can give you more than you can spend. <laughs> Already God has promised that as you, as you go through life, you will not go through life empty handed. No. God has promised that as a believer who has started his redemption journey, that you will not go through life empty handed. Let, no, let's see it in the book of Exodus chapter 3, verse 21 and verse 22. And I will give this hour favor. Raise your hand and say, and he shall give me favor. Can you say it one more time and say it louder? That's what I call the privileges of, of, of a born again child of God. This God, the maker of heaven and earth. He who made the oceans, he who made the hills, he who made everyone you know says you will not go through life empty handed. But how many of you believe it? Are you sure? Read on, sir. I'll give these people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And it shall come to pass when you go, ye shall not go you empty. Not empty handed. But every woman shall borrow of her neighbor and of her that sojourneth in her house jewels of silver and jewels of gold. God says He will put gold and silver in your hands. You don't need money to create money, you need wisdom, you need knowledge, you need understanding, you need creativity, you need imagination. Every man's life is limited by his imagination. Ability to see what others cannot see will make you a hero. 
ability to see gold in the trash will make you a hero. And this awesomely awesome God has promised to give you these gifts. In fact, God weeps and says, Is there anyone amongst you that lacks wisdom? Let him come. As I speak this night, God is ready to bless you with wisdom. But what is wisdom? What is wisdom? Wisdom is the ability to see the unprotected forehead of your Goliath. Wisdom is the ability to see solution in every problem. And I want to announce every problem the enemy brings your way, God will show you a way out of it. He says he will put gold and silver in your hands. I want you to believe it. Beginning tonight, your miracle in that area will start. Jesus, you spoken word to break Peter's hardship. And tonight, he will use the same word to break your hardship and break your lack and break your hardship and break your lack and break your hardship and break your lack. Can you therefore raise your hand and shout hallelujah somebody? I don't know what the enemy had done to make your life unbearable and difficult and hard. But this night I can see handkerchiefs drop from heaven to wipe away your tears. Jesus made a powerful sentence. He said he came that it may be well with you. No, no, no. He didn't say they meant well. Can you say to two persons, Jesus came that it may be well with you, 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 you. Can we run to chapter one of the book of Psalms? I will take verse 3. It's a powerful Bible line. Hide it in your heart. Meditate upon it. Consider it. Absorb it. Assimilate it. Let it become part of your thought processes. What did I call it? Psalms. Chapter what? 1. This what? 3. And it shall be, it shall be like a tree planted by the rivers. The Bible water. says you will be like a tree planted along Calabar or on Cameroon rivers. Every time I travel to Cameroon, I will insist on coming back by the sea. Just to look at those trees and say to them, I will be like you all. They bloom in season and out of season. They all look rich. And I declare, so shall your life be. You cannot enter, I won't allow you to enter into 2015 as a struggling man. This God shall grease your life. Shall grease your life. You will be like a tree planted along the rivers of life. Read on, sir. That bringeth forth his fruit in his season. Yes, sir. His leaf also shall not wither. Can you do me a favor? Stand up and say to four persons, anybody who help in this life shall prosper. Stand up, stand up, sir. Stand up, sir. Stand up. Raise your hand therefore and decree and declare and speak over yourself and say, anybody I help in this life shall prosper. I, I hope you understand what I've just said now. Not only will they prosper, they remember you as one that God used to lift them up. You were the ladder they used to, they used to step out of the pit where there was no water nor ladder. They will not forget you. They will remember you. I was shocked. A man called me and said, your prayer 10 years ago brought me to a place of financial prominence and eminence. I have paid 10 million into your account. You remember what my prayer did for you 10 years ago? He said, yes, sir. 
those who have helped through life by my spoken word tonight shall remember you Now, well, this year we went home and we had about 12 cows people brought from different homes to thank me for my ministry to my village. 12 cows. The funny thing was my family couldn't finish the 12 cows, so I gave away some of the ones they couldn't finish. And the story was that Omar is so rich, he gives cow as Christmas card. They didn't know Naboroboro make me rich. But I want to announce, you are next in line to have such miracle. Jesus, Edi you to welcome me. And you do you do the move on. And you do you do the move on. And you do you do the move on. Jesus, Jesus, Edi you to welcome me.
chapter 6 verse 2 is a Bible we will also confirm it and affirm it with the book of Numbers chapter 14 verse 28 there are so many of us who are busy cursing ourselves and this night even if you don't hear anything again I will say hide this in your heart never you put a cross upon yourself never you say I am suffering the word I am is a present continuous tense. When you say I am suffering, you're saying today I am suffering. Tomorrow I'll suffer. Every day I'll suffer. And the Bible frightens me when the Bible says God, not an angel, God himself will make sure you suffer as you have said. When people call you over the phone and ask you how are you, why must you say things are terribly bad? Try me, call me tomorrow morning and ask me, hey, Reverend, how are you? You hear me say fantastic and fantabulous. You speak of those things which are not as though they are and they shall come to pass. My American friends get angry every time I say to them it is fantastic. They ask me, oh, man, what is there in Nigeria to make life fantastic? Hey, it is not where you are that defines who you are. It is who you are that defines where you are. When a man is a child of God in prison, that prison will become a palace. When you put a child of God between two soldiers, he will sleep. Between five lions, he will sleep. Because the lions will say to him, Brother, we remember you, brother, we remember you. Sleep and sleep well. Let's see the book of Proverbs 6 for two. What does he say, sir? Thou art snared by the words of thy mouth. You are taken with the words of your mouth. Well, there are so many of us who keep saying, I'm sick. Or others said, I am unlucky. Hey, please, please, please. You have been blessed by God. You cannot be unlucky. Nobody can even cross you because God has blessed you. In chapter 23 of the book of Numbers 23, 23, God says, no man can cause a man I have blessed. Not even a witch, not even a wizard. We're driving out of my village house, my wife and I. A, a, an eighth mate of mine said to me, Oma, we will this area, we have been trying to reach you. Every time we we'll come close to you, we'll find a wall of fire raging around you. But one day, we shall put up that fire and deal with you. Me? Oh God, we didn't quarrel. Why are you threatening me? I said, okay, I have something to say myself. In seven days' time, they will pour petrol on you and set you on fire. A wizard cannot live near me. A witch cannot threaten me and go free. You just know the power God has. He asked me, who born monkey? And I said, seven days from today, you know who born monkey? God has blessed us. No witch has the right to put a cause upon you. And even if they try, it will not work. It will not work. It will not work. Stop looking down on yourself. You are not an ordinary person. You sit already in heavenly places with Jesus. Seven days after, a prominent woman from my village died who had seven sons. And they were told my friend killed their mother. They stopped him at the village square and said, we will not consult government. We will deal with you right here and now. And they poured petrol on him and set him on fire. He burnt to ashes. My wife warned me and said, when people provoke you to anger, can you shut up your mouth? And I said, ask God to give me wisdom. But this one I did is as I felt late. 
Other witches will know there is danger. Stop putting a curse upon yourself. Let's roll to chapter 14, the 20th of the book of Numbers. Say unto, them, say unto them as truly as I live as truly as I live says the Lord not says an angel as I have spoken in my ear so shall I do unto you when you go about saying I'm dying I'm dying you will soon begin to die everybody hates me everybody will hate you oh nobody likes me nobody will like you men and brethren Jesus came that he may be well with you that means every situation and obstacle and circumstances that will make your life difficult has been touched by Jesus and taken away from you. Therefore, whatever you lay your hand to do. Oh, sorry, we didn't finish the book of Psalm chapter 1 verse 3. Let's take it. Take the last line. Beautiful line. What does it say, sir? And whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Say it again. And whatsoever he doeth. Please, everybody prosper. look up and look at the Bible. Say, whatever he laid his hand to do shall prosper. Please find two persons. Say to each one, whatever I laid this my hand to do shall prosper. I want you to get that message well. My cousin was a carpenter in Gabon. He bought a Vespa and bought additional lamb for the Vespa. One day he was driving along the road. The president convoy overtook him and blocked him. And the president said to him, I, I like your Vespa. From now henceforth, when we travel, can you lead us? A carpenter said, From now henceforth, when we travel, please lead us. And my cousin was so happy. One day, the person asked him, What do you do? He said, I'm a carpenter. A carpenter? He said, Yes. The president said to him, From now henceforth, all the broken chairs in the presidency you repair. Broken chairs in the Ministry of Information, no, Ministry of Education and Finance. You will repair all of them. One day the person asked him, Can you have a uh, lunch with us? <laughs> My cousin, a carpenter, ate with Mr. President. Can you do me a favor? Tell two persons and say, That God is my God. An ordinary carpenter became a big man. He built a house that the roof was a, is, is the water tank. I copied it from him. And I want to announce this night that that God is your God. Everything around you has been instructed by whatever you lay your hand to do. Sister Grace used to sell cake in Calabar. The genius who built Calabar or a com road tried to seduce her. She wouldn't allow them. The day the one came to commission that road, they called her and gave her a contract to entertain the crowd that shall come. From selling cake, she now has about six supermarkets in Calabar. This God that peace shall locate you and will bless you. And I want to announce tonight that every day in your life shall be a messenger from God that will come with a gift, a gift, a gift, a gift, a gift, a gift. Can you raise that hand and shout hallelujah somebody? 
One more time, raise your hand and say, whatever I shall let this hand to do shall prosper. Shall prosper. Shall prosper. Shall prosper. Shall prosper. That you have difficulties today does not mean it will last forever. Already yesterday is a cancel check, tomorrow is a promise note, but today is cash. Your miracles have started now. Can we all stand up? Just say to God, if there is any sin I have committed that will stop you from blessing me this night, please forgive me. Where there is doubt in my heart, Father, I know that doubt is a weed and a traitor. Forgive me. Help me to believe you. Help me to expect great miracles from you. Don't let me leave this miracle ground without a testimony. Can everybody pray? Just say to God, whatever I have done that will stop you from blessing me this night, Father, forgive me. Did anybody put a curse upon your parents or upon you? Let that curse be annulled. Let it be cancelled. <laughs> May God bless you with fresh air and a new beginning. The Spirit of God is moving from person to person. He must not pass you. <coughs> he must not pass you by. This is your night of divine visitation.
struggling ain't this night what I have been looking for shall now look for me goodness and mercy have been looking for me and shall now overtake me it shall be so in the name of the father and of the son and of the Holy Ghost. Before we go into miracle prayer, I, I want to see those six persons that God had just opened your ears and you can hear me clearer. <coughs> you can hear me vividly. You can hear me distinctly. I said you'll be six in number. Satan has no choice. You have been healed already. Just raise those hands and celebrate this great God. If you are one of them, raise up your hand. That's number one. What are others? That's huh? number two. 
number two, number three, number four, number five, number six. I said there are people who will see better this night. How many did I say there will be? Huh? 54. Why? I don't know if you know why I raise songs. I raise songs to take you to Club 10 where miracles happen. Because your promotion in life is waiting for your praise. All the gates of heaven, they open at the command of a good song. When you raise a good song unto God, your enemies shall be scattered. So all the look up and look at me. Those of you can see me clearer and, and vividly and more distinctly. You can see me better than you saw at the beginning. We had a great testimony uh, the night I ministered along this line. I understand a woman gave a testimony in the women's meeting of God healing her. What was it again? What is, what, what are those who were there? I hear it was a great testimony where on one side of her body, the day will break, this side will be darkness. And God healed her. Well, anybody who knows about it? Is she here? Somebody's here. Come on, give the Lord a good clap of free. It is tomorrow we shall listen to testimony where I know we're already late, but I told you this is my fourth meeting today. Uh, only love could have made me to come. If God has touched your eyes, let's be fast because we want to pray for 34 people that labor under a great cross, an indescribable cross, cause that repeats. They will not go home the same. But now, all those who can see me better and clearer, and more distinctly, and more vividly, can I have you raise up your hand quickly? We don't have time. If God had touched your eyes and you're a grateful person, knowing that only the grateful shall be fruitful, raise up your hand and raise it very well. Somebody count for us. Raise it very well. Somebody count for us. Raise it very well. In 1987, I was speaking in Abreba, and I, they, they gave me more money than I could spend. I used helicopter six hours a day for two days. And I said to God, what can you do for people that can give this much money? And God said, Omar, send for the blind across the local government area. I'll heal without prayer. They brought 18 blind people. 17 said their eyes just opened. One woman said her eyes did not open. I was amused. An hour after, the parents brought her to say she told a lie. And as soon as she told that lie, her eyes closed again. They asked me to pray. And I said, no, my anointing at the time they were talking to me was anointing for food, fight for Gary and sleep. And I said, Madam, I will not pray. You go with your blindness the rest of your life. Be grateful. God will do more for you. All those that God has touched their eyes, can you please raise up your hand quickly? Our workers, count quickly and see if we have read 54. Please let nobody go. Please let nobody go. The days are evil. Allow us to cover you with the grace. Yes, sir. Count. Raise your hand very well. Don't bring down your hand until they have counted you. We are presenting you to heaven as a grateful person. We are saying to God, if there are more miracles, they should consider you. So raise your hand quickly and raise it now. You can wave it so that they will see you quickly. Those counting for a can you please be faster? Huh? 
80. Don't clap like you have not eaten food for one year. Okay, how many did I say God will heal the pain in the legs? Uh, four. We have 24 across the road. Total number is what? Oh, this God must be an Uyo man. Huh? No, those who live outside of you should relocate and come to you. <laughs> Men and brethren, I don't know. This God is just awesome. Yes, you had pain in your legs or pain in your leg. Now the pain is gone. Can I have you raise up your hand quickly because we want to do one more thing? Raise your hand very well. Please, you are helping us come. Come quickly. We are doing this thing to increase your faith and make you know that God answers. Even when we did not pray, he gives answer to our spoken word. <laughs> I was raising money for Four Square Gospel Church in Lagos. A man brought his check and said, sir, this check is my last money. If God does not give me back this money, what shall I do to you? And I said, your punishment will be this. Everywhere you go, money. In your sleep, money. Where you are awake, money. When you kneel down to pray, money. It began to happen in his life. He ran back to me and said, Please tell God to stop, to stop, to stop. Eh? How many? 120. 120. 123. Can you raise your hand and say, This God is my God? What else did I say God will do this now? I said there will be 20 sisters. While I'll be preaching the, the volcanic eruption in their wombs, which will be a confirmation and affirmation and attestation that this night is the beginning of their unending laughter. Hey, men and brethren, women don't love children. They celebrate them. The day, the day we got our first child, my wife began to put that boy between the two of us. It's a way of telling me, Oh my, you are now on page three. This boy is on page one. As I speak, I don't know whether she loves the boy less. I'm sure they're talking outside now, two of them. Women love children. No, they celebrate them. No, they adore them. 60 additional people. 60. Additional people that with pains. Okay. The legs that have been healed. What of the womb area? We've not counted that one. Please, please, please. God touched your womb while I was preaching without prayer. Raise your hand. Do it quickly. We'll, we'll soon switch over to two more items. But how many of you are happy this night? I, I don't know whether you have noticed my voice has been abused repeatedly and my voice is punishing me. But I don't care. I want to see God bless your life. You will not enter into 2016 with struggling. Tomorrow shall be our crossover night. And this night, remember, I'm going to pray for your family. Yes, that God will raise up more successful person in that family. When one man, there's this thing they call one in town. It's, it's a cross. When you are the only successful person in your family, the trouble will be so. And I want to announce it shall not be so. Yes, th those 20 people, can I have you raise up your hand? You, there was a movement in your womb, and to you, you know it is God's visitation. 
that he'll bless you with children and more children than you can handle. Raise those hands quickly. We want to count. If you're a man, don't raise your hand or else you'll be pregnant this year. Are the hands up? There is this song I heard in the Apostolic Church many years ago. I have not forgotten that song. I don't know what took me to that church. And they were singing, Nini made you only you born. Nini made you you born. And the young Nini made you only you born. Nini made you only you born. And the young songs. Tomorrow shall be our crossover night. From Egypt of struggling to Canaan of great promotion and victory. How many do we have? What? Who can convince me that God does not live in Uyo? <laughs> My pastor says it. this is the spiritual center. Raise your hand one more time and prophesy and say all the blessings God has for me shall be delivered this night to me. I, I, I want her to take her offering before the prayer. Because some people will follow that anointing and while they sleep, some of us will be going. I don't want you to sleep with your offering in your hand. I, I am looking for, if I want a fast offering. Do I have anybody here who can give God 10,000 naira offering? I, I am ready myself. I want to give offering because of the instrumentalist the choir discovered. But I raise that to hand again. But your guitar didn't sound well this night. What happened? Your wife slapped you before coming? Because the other day, every time you, you string through the string, something will happen inside me. And I'm going to give God 100,000 naira as offering because the choir discovered it. Okay, get me hundred thousand. Can I have? Can I have just uh, ten more people who can give God hundred thousand that God may bless them with successful children that shall take care of them in their old age. You use sacrificial offering to stop the cross in your family in your life. So David offered sacrifice unto God. When the king wanted him to take the offering materials free, he said, no, I cannot give an offering that costs me nothing. Let me have only 10 persons 
who can give special offering to my Just join me. I want nine. I'm already number one. I want you to come for stand up. You can pay your own tomorrow. But come out here. I have this special prayer for you that God will raise up a child for your old age. Just stand there. Stand there. Okay, we are three. If you are coming, come. We don't have time. We are fighting against time. Hundred thousand naira is no money. If God will bless you with one. In 1977, my last in the Bible College, God shocked me. He said, "Oh man, I'm going to give you a child for your old age." Your labor of love in my kingdom shall be rewarded with one child for your old age. When I told my wife, she asked me to ask God to give us a boy. Who is fooling who? Boys care for their mother. Oh, they love their mother. They give their first uh, salary to their mother. They pray for her every day. She's their lover. Father, if you have a gifted child for me, let her be a girl. Men and brethren, girls care for their father. Uh, am I correct? Oh, boys care for their mother. If their mother cries, they will cry. I don't know whether my wife has forgiven me, but I'm so happy to amend that prayer. As I speak, the girl went to school. It didn't cost me one kubo. Government paid her school fees. Those of you who attended gifted children's school in Sumedja, you know what I'm saying is true. The government used to give us money for traveling to see her. I want to announce it shall be so unto you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Did I count myself? 13. Clap if you want to clap. Those who can give God 50,000 naira, 35,000 naira, 10,000 naira, five, can you stand up and come out to quickly? I want to pray for you from 50 to 5,000. Can you call? Be fast, be fast. We don't, hey, there are things you must not allow it to, to escape you. Come quickly, come quickly. Only a giver shall prosper. If you get what you can, and you can what you get, and sit on the can and guard the can, you may be a church member, a church elder, but you'll be hopelessly and wretchedly and stupidly poor. All those who can give God 5,000, can you join them? Those who can give 1,000, can you join them? Those who can give 1,000. All these are our daughters. Look out. If the man who proposed to you is not among those who are standing here, tell him I said that proposal needs another round of prayer support. If you marry a man who is not a giver, poverty will be in your toilet, in your kitchen, in your bedroom, in your parlor. Yes, we fast. Those who can give God 500 naira, can you join them? Those who can give 100 naira, but it must be brand new notes. Okay, bring the tea note, you can come. No, don't walk like a kidnapper is behind you. Walk like a prophet is behind you to prophesy you into a beautiful destiny. Giving separates men from the boys. The biggest secret I know is to give. There, there, was, there was a man on this altar who used to say to me, you, you give out money like water, and I laugh. The Bible says, those who water shall be watered. The Bible says, give, and God shall give back to you. Good bench of bread and shaking shall he call your destiny helpers to put money in your hand. Do you know why you sleep? God can give you a... Nobody has financial problem. What to have is idea problem. 
And I have said that favor can cut up. Can you imagine my brother, a carpenter? He was asked to escort Mr. President. Did he sleep that night? He didn't sleep. He kept asking the wife, am I dreaming? Was it in this life? The day he buried his mother, he asked me, brother, how can a rich man bury his mother in this village? And I said, give every one of us a plate of food, a bottle of capel, a bottle of water. Then we shall come to a big man. He said, it is done. <laughs> when trucks began to arrive carrying food, <laughs> I asked him, apart from the money you made through the president, have you ever stolen? He said, no, where did you get such money? He said, that relationship brought him more money than he ever saw. And everyone standing before me tonight, there is a relationship waiting for you. Wait, 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 please listen to me. Uh, not every relationship. I told my wife I can't ask Mr. President for money because I'm a big man. And my relationship will not be with the yeah, with I have it with the president, but that's will not where the money will come. The money must come from heaven. That is to say, if God gives a relationship and you know there's a better one coming, suspend so that one and wait for the second one. Are you still here? Can you raise up your hand and, and declare after me, say, I believe and confess. As I water the work of the Lord tonight, heaven shall water my life. Whatever I shall lay this hand to do shall prosper. Circumstances, the economy of Nigeria shall not affect my own economy. Now that money has failed in Nigeria, I shall increase. I shall multiply. I shall lend money. I will never borrow. No matter how many problems and me shall create in my life, I will always have more than enough. After all my bills have been paid for, there shall be surplus money with me. This night, God shall increase my creativity, my imagination, my wisdom, my favor. It shall be an ever-increasing favor. Heaven above me is now open. And God has started one man school for me. When I sleep upon my bed, he will be my teacher. And will teach me the things I must know. I therefore believe. I am no longer an ordinary person. I am now an extraordinary person. The cause in my father's house is now an old. The cause I put upon myself is now annulled. I am now a spiritual Israelite. Abraham is my covenant father. Therefore, wherever I go, I shall prosper as the Jews. I shall see gold in the trash. What others are looking for, fighting for, Dying for shall come looking for me. It shall be so. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Kai, the crowd is amazing. What do we do? Huh? Come and be my consultant. What do we do? What? You pick what later? They can put it on the carpet and we'll pick the money later. Uh, 
but not tomorrow, today. <laughs> Finally, I'm going to ask you to make a prophetic pronouncement over yourself. You can forget your name. Don't forget what I'm about to ask you to say. Please raise your hand and declare and say, not only shall I be blessed, I shall be a blessing everywhere I go. No, I don't know whether you understand what I've, I have just said. You know, there was this church I used to preach for them in America. And they asked me to give money. Initially, I used to protest and say, hey, when, when people preach, they're giving offering, but God said, no, 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 be a blessing to them. They were shocked to see a black man give the money in dollars, surplus money. Tonight I announce, not only will you be blessed, you will be a blessing. A man who is a blessing is a man who has more than enough. A man who has surplus. A man who has more than he needs. Do you know you can get to that place? And now you are in that place. I, I had this friend of mine. Every time I saw him drive out of a village, I found surplus money in his car. When I asked him, my friend, I go to a village and spend everything I have. But you, you always drive out with surplus money. He looked at me and said, oh, my, we're not in the same class. I am a class above you. No matter how many problems my relations have for me, after picking the bills, this God I preach will give me surplus money. And I said to God, put my name there. It, it, it will fit me very well. As a result, I can go to supermarket with my family and buy everything they want me to buy. I say have surplus. I can go to the village. I can go to the village every other week and say come back with surplus money. It's a place in the spirit realm that God can take you to. By my pronouncement tonight, that's where you are. I know our leaders have asked you to drop your offering on the carpet. But please don't fight. I don't like us fighting. Let's not act like political talks. When you drop your own, find your way to your seat. Please don't fight anybody. Don't push anybody. Don't march anybody. Do it peacefully. Let the Holy Spirit know you have the mark of the righteous one. Pastor Joe, come back and grab the microphone. Let's have songs go to cloud 10. And please, drop, don't throw, just come close, drop, be patient enough for your tongue. And the sun will rise if you can try and dance. If you don't know how to dance, just act like you have whispered. We shall conclude you have danced. Uh, instrumentalist, can you, I just got a friend for you, for your sake. So get ready to mesmerize us with beautiful songs. Anybody who is happy this night, declare that this night is my night of new beginning. The beginning of my unending laughter.
if you came with any member of your family, hold his or her hands. And please stand up. We will not take the other long prayer because of time. But tomorrow, please, let us come on time. That we may meet everybody at the point of his or her needs. Uh, please hold members of your family's hands. As a family stand together. As a family stand together. Please, no more movement. Can we just respect God? Father, I present every family here represented to you. And let an angel be appointed to stand over each family. And any cause placed upon them as a family, as individuals, let that cause be cancelled now. Father, it's, it is sad that some people cross over to a new year and they cross with the loads and the problems and the difficulties and the sicknesses. This one year shall be a year of new beginning for each family. Whatever load the enemy has placed on them, Father, I demand they will not carry that load to a new year. Israel left their reproach and shame in Egypt. So shall your people leave their shame and reproach in 2015. Whatever had made anybody here cry, let it be taken out of that family. Whatever had made anybody here be, be mocked by those who know him. Whatever had made people to laugh at anyone here, let it be taken away from such persons. <sighs> Father, let this night be a night of new beginning. Let this night be a night of the beginning of an unending laughter. Amen. Father, move from family to family. A family where only one person has prospered. Let others also prosper. Every family that the roof of the house leaks, may you seal up that leaking point. Whatever is missing in every family, whatever is missing, whatever is missing, whatever is missing, whatever is missing, Father, do for each family what they cannot do for themselves. Father, every family here represented, give them that which is more than money. All those who were chained, let the chain be broken. Let it be broken. Let it be broken. Let it be broken. Let it be broken. By the power of God, in the name of Jesus. Ooh. Somebody help! Somebody help! Somebody help! Somebody help! Father, I demand your people shall be slaves no more. Yeah. 
they shall be slaves no more. Whatever they have worked for shall not be delivered to them. Whatever they have labored for, whatever they have paid for, the woman at the counter shall cheat them no more. Father, you ask me to announce that I shall be well with each and every one of us. Tomorrow, whatever the enemy will do to stop anyone from coming and coming on time, it is now cancelled. No sickness shall keep anyone behind. No lack of money shall keep anyone behind. No lack of transport or petrol shall keep anyone behind. Amen. Father, you are awesome. And therefore, let your peculiar concentrated presence mock anything that mocks anyone here. Any man that mocks anyone. Any witch that mocks anyone. Any wizard that mocks anyone. Any snake spirit that mocks anyone. Any marine spirit that mocks anybody now shall not be mocked by your spirit in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. have anybody who feels God has healed him or her or set him or her free. Can you wave that to your hand and shout hallelujah. Huh? Tomorrow shall be our handkerchief night. Everyone must come with a clean white handkerchief. There will be what you call transferable anointing into those handkerchiefs. Away from here, the transferred anointing shall work for you. Can you raise up your hand, just thank the Lord and bless the Lord. Our chairman will come and say the grace. Let us say the grace in fellowship. Now, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, oh, somebody say, surely goodness and mercy shall follow you as you're going. No harm shall come near your dwelling. Nothing shall be taken away from you. But the Lord shall multiply bless you. Go in peace. The Lord be with you. In Jesus' name. Please, as you're going, 